What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. I'm Richie, and this is Jailbreak. And this video is going to be a departure from most videos on this channel because in this channel, I'm going to be covering some high technology. This is a 2022 i9 14-core Razorblade Pro 17. Now, I have a couple of these, and I was fortunate to get this particular unit. I'm going to benchmark this against the late 21 and early 21 Razorblade Pro 17s, the i7 and i9 respectively. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give away my personal Razorblade Pro 17 4K touchscreen to one of you guys. So you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. <laughs> Okay, this brand new 2022 i9 14-core RTX 3080 Ti Razorblade Pro 17 basically fell into my lap. So, I'm going to give away my 2020 Razorblade Pro 17 4K touchscreen to one of you guys. In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on this thing after running it for several days, and I'm going to compare it side by side with the late model 21 i9 razor blade 17 and the early model 21 i7 razor blade 17 both have rtx 3080s in them so i want to do a side by side by side comparison and you're going to see the results but i gotta tell you this is my fourth razor blade pro 17 and they look pretty much identical Everything on this is the same as the 2021, except for one thing, or two things, or maybe several things. First of all, it's got a 14-core processor in it. Second of all, it's got eight speakers in it instead of four. Third of all, they moved the power button out of the speaker finally. They didn't give us a fingerprint scanner, but at least they moved the power button, so there's that. And I'm also going to upgrade the brand new 2022 before I even boot it up for the first time ever. I'm going to upgrade it to 12 terabytes of storage and 64 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM. The 2022 looks almost identical to the 21. There's a couple of subtle changes, but the input and outputs are the same for the most part. UHS-3 card reader on both of them, Thunderbolt 4 inputs and outputs, and they're both fingerprint magnets like they've always been. I always use wireless keyboards and mice and I always use skins on these to kind of protect them. So there's that. The biggest thing any Razer owner is going to notice on the 22 is the power button is no longer incorporated into the speaker. And no, they didn't give us a fingerprint scanner. They put the power button on the keyboard where the delete button used to be on the 21 in all units previous to this. The 21 has an 11th gen Intel 8 core processor. The 22 comes with an i9 14 core processor. They both have THX spatial sound and they sound really good in my opinion. The 22 has got a little bit bigger of a battery and I got about an extra hour of web surfing out of it compared to the late 21 model doing the identical tasks. So that was pretty cool. The screens are both 4K on the late 21 and the 22 model with 120 Hertz refresh on the 21 and 144 on the 2022. 
The 2021 has a touchscreen. The 2022, the new unit, does not. And for some reason, Razer brought a bezel back to the top, which I don't understand. But it is what it is. Razer does things that nobody else understands, and we keep buying them or receiving them. Put it that way. But the color on the 21 seems to be a little cleaner than on the 22, but it's hard to tell. I just got it. Now here's a look at the 21's keyboard layout. We're all familiar with it. If you owned a Razer Blade Pro, you're familiar with the setup. Speaker on either side, really nice mouse pad in the middle, a couple of stickers telling you what's inside, and the power button incorporated into the speaker on the right hand side. That's what they've given us for years, that's what we've rolled with. Well for 2022, this is what it looks like. Basically the same setup, except you'll notice that the speakers are no longer made out of whatever they were previously made out of, and the power button is no longer incorporated into the right hand speaker. It now takes the place of the delete button. They didn't get rid of the delete button, they just bumped it over. And got rid of the INS button, which I don't even know what that is. At any rate, here's a look at the ports. Thunderbolt 4, uh, UHS 3, SD card, Kensington lock, HDMI, and Razer's propri proprietary power pack plug. And they put a coating on it so it wouldn't attract fingerprints. It's a little better, but it's still a fingerprint magnet. But I just skin them anyway so it doesn't make any difference to protect them. Now if you're new to the channel, here's an example of what I do. This is the interior of my brand new, only driven at 2,000 mile, 4Runner TRD Pro. I take things apart and I upgrade it myself. No matter what it is, for the most part. And computers are no different. As soon as I got this, I upgraded it before I even booted it up for the first time. Externally, the only way you can tell the difference between these two units, the 217s, is the 2022 has two extra vents on the bottom, probably to help cool that 14 core. The 21 does not have them, as you can see, as I'm helpfully pointing out to you. See how I roll, guys? So the 2021s had four speakers. And they sounded much better than they ever did. The THX speakers in the late model 21 were really good. The ones in the early model, not so much. But the new one, the 2022, has eight speakers total. Four subwoofers and four tweeters. And it sounds really amazing. They're really taking a run at the MacBook Pro here. Because they have to. So they are. It's much better, in my opinion. Both laptops have 4K screens. Uh, the 2022 is not a touch screen, but it's a 144 hertz. I've already mentioned that. They both have 1080 PI webcams built into them. Again, the 2022 has a bezel at the top, which the 21s did not have. I don't know why, is what it is. So let's open these guys up because I'm gonna be cannibalizing one of the hard drives out of my late model 21 and putting it as my boot drive in the new 22. It's a Sabrent Rocket 4 terabyte. That's going to be my boot drive. So I pull it out. I put it in my external cloning apparatus and let it do its thing. And then after I know that it works and it'll boot the old laptop, I erase it and upload the new laptop's boot drive to it. Now make sure you use static protection. I have this on a static mat and I also have a bracelet on my wrist for static because I have blown a motherboard in a brand new computer. One other small difference between the late 21 and early 22 17s is there's no screws at the rear of the 22 for whatever reason. But I'll tell you what, getting the back cover off after I got the screws out was still really difficult. So I just worked at it. I was very careful. I didn't want to damage anything because I'm literally upgrading this before I ever even turned it on. So I got 
DDR5 Crucial 64 gig of RAM 4800 for the new machine. And Crucial was the only company I could find that actually offered an upgrade for this. So you'll see how it does in the, uh, in the bench test pretty soon. But it took a while to get this cover off, but I did finally get it off. Now here's a funny story. This video was already at the 17 minute mark and the computer crashed and I lost half the video. So I'm literally remaking it all over again. I believe that's because it comes with Windows 11 already in it, which I did not want, but it is what it is. What are you gonna do? At any rate, I finally got the, the back cover off and upgraded the RAM, which is incredibly easy to do. Obviously, there's two M.2 slots in the back of the Razer, and it's a little bit different looking inside. It's strange that it has more speakers and less cooling, but it's Razer claims they have a better vapor cooling setup in this thing. And I'll tell you what, from experience, the late 21 with the i9 processor in it, the fan is always running, even when it's on automatic. It's always running. The 22 is way quieter. It's a much quieter unit right off the bat. And the reason this should be a valuable video is I'm giving you real world information. Every video I've ever watched on any of these laptops and then bought it because of the laptop review, they're not telling the truth. It's not doing 8K footage. It's not streaming this, that, and the other thing. They always bullshit in the videos and I hate it because they're getting the laptops completely and totally for free. You see what I'm saying? At any rate. Another thing that most people may not know is the new 22 has a muck switch in it. So there you go. And for all you computer guys, here's a close look at what the difference is between the late 21, which you're looking at now. That's what it looks like inside. It's running 12 terabytes of storage, 64 gigs of RAM. And here's the new machine inside, which is also right now running 12 terabytes of storage, 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So it's kind of a beast. But that's what it looks like inside. Beautiful. It was beautiful, but it was even better after I put the Sabrent Rocket 4 terabyte in as my boot drive and a Sabrent 8 terabyte SSD as my main new volume storage. Everything I was very careful with, I'm always careful with these things. I blew up an HP Envy's motherboard because I didn't know what static was. I do now. Static is invisible, but will destroy a laptop. Put all the screws back in. Good to go. Now, I'm going to figure out the rules for this contest to give away this laptop. I'll figure them out by the end of the video, I'm sure. But you're going to have to like, you're going to have to subscribe, and you're going to have to comment that you're in. Don't send me a sad story, because you'll automatically be out, okay? Just leave a comment, I'm in. Don't leave free comments. This is the Razor Blade Pro 19 that I'm giving away. And it does have a little dent in the bottom. Because my dad worked on it and he stripped one of the screws. But that's it. You can upgrade this to 12 terabytes of storage. I've done it before. It's already got 64 gigs of RAM in it. And it is perfect. RTX 3080, 4K touchscreen. I mean, this is a serious laptop. It's a beautiful laptop. But as you can see, I now have three of them. So I'm going to give this one away. I use wireless keyboards and wireless mice, so I never use this. I never use this stuff. <clears throat> and I actually never use the touchscreen either. Once in a great while, but this computer works like a champ. That's a screen, that's a uh, skin. And there was a skin on the bottom. I'll try to fix that up a little bit, but you can order another one of these if you were so inclined. If you win this, you can just get another one on eBay, but it makes zero difference. It doesn't affect its performance at all. And I'll even send it to you in the original box. How's that? Okay, let's get to the bench testing, shall we? I'm just going to let you take a look at the inside side by side. 22 is on the left. 
Late Model 21 is on the right. They're both spec'd out the same except for the processors and this one has a 3080, this one has a 3080 Ti. So there, as they say, is that. On to the bench test. I literally did the testing side by side and then last night I did the early 21 i7 processor on its own. So I've got results for all three. So here we go. The computer just crashed again and I have to start over again because it didn't save the last 10 minutes of edited video. But we're going to start in Razer Synapse and max everything out and put it on GPU dedicated. And we're going to test the early 21 i7 8 core RTX 3080 and see how that does. This was the last computer I tested. The late model 21 and the 22, the one I'm on right now, I tested side by side. So here's the scores, 115, 95, and 109, I believe. And the beauty is the i7 actually performed better than expected according to the testing. And that's awesome. That's totally awesome. It's coming up right here. It performed better than expected. Um, and there's the stats for everything else. The RTX 3080 performed below expectation. The SSD did as well, apparently, which kind of sucks, even though it says 205% outstanding. And then the Kingston 64 gig of RAM in the early 21 i7 RTX 3080 performed well, apparently, but still below average. Let's go to the late model 21. Once again, I jump into Razer Synapse and I max everything out, GPU dedicated, and put everything on high for this test. Now, the this particular laptop that I'm showing you the testing is right here, and you can hear the fans running. The late 21, the fans are always running, even when the laptop's doing nothing. So that kind of sucks, but that should give us a high score, no? But when you look at the results, you realize that the i7 actually did better, except on workstation by a couple of points. And we all know that Razer throttles back the juice on these laptops so that it deals with the heating issues. But this is the laptop that's constantly sitting here with the fan running so loud I have to stop recording if I'm editing, which is what I do. I make a lot of videos. I'm editing all the time. And this laptop... The one you're seeing the results for right now is very loud. And yet the i7 with the 8-core i7 RTX 3080 did better in this test than the late model. How crazy is that, man? That's Razer for you. And I'm on a brand new 2022 that's already crashed twice during this editing session, costing me hours Okay, so finally, this is the i9 2022 RTX 3080 Ti running the same test as the 2021 models. Both models ran. So let's see what this comes up with. And remember, you still want to listen to the end to figure out how to win that Razer Blade Pro. The 2020 Razer Blade Pro i7 RTX 3080 that I'm giving away. It's got a small ding in the box on the bottom of it, but that's absolutely irrelevant. At any rate, let's see what this thing can do. 14 cores, RTX 3080 Ti, 64 gigs of RAM, DDR5 RAM. This thing should blow everything away by a lot, correct? And as you can hear, the late model i9 is revving up the fans right now, even though it's sitting there doing nothing. Okay, here we go. The i9 is done. And these are our numbers, 126, 95, and 124. Slightly better than the other two machines. Slightly better than the i7, I should say, because the i9, late 21, sucked. According to this, the i9 14 core is running below expected. The RTX 3080 Ti is running below expected. But the things I just upgraded 
the 8 terabyte and the 4 terabyte boot drive are way above expectation and the Corsair 64 gig RAM is running below expectation so that kind of sucks but it's all that was available it is what it is maybe I'll put it back together in its standard stock form and see what it runs but I doubt it because it's already together I'm not going to keep taking it apart so there you have it there's all your numbers for all those particular machines and if I had to recommend one which one would I recommend well I would recommend the i7 RTX 3080 with the high definition screen because it it beat the other two in testing and I've never had an issue with it it's never left my house either the main computer that I use is the late 2021 and that's the one that just lost Bluetooth on me would I recommend the brand new 14 core no because making this video took four times longer than it needed to because that thing kept crashing and I did all the updates it required from Windows and Razer the first two days that I owned it you see what I'm saying so I'd go with the i7 but I don't even know if you can get it anymore but if you keep watching you might be able to get one the reason I say go with the i7 8 core RTX 3080 is because it's the only one where the the i7 chip actually lived up to what it was supposed to both of these i9s didn't they didn't live up to their percentages do you see what I'm saying and again I'm not a professional tech guy I just own a lot of technology and nobody's put an i9 video up yet on the new Razer there's always a problem with the Razer one way or the other and customer support is at least three days away you know round trip they ask you you register them you belong to Razer Synapse you sign in you register all your devices and every single solitary time they talk to you like they've never heard of you ever I've owned five of these devices but I'm going to be selling the one that actually beat the other two laptops out of these three. I'm selling the i7. I've had it for seven months. I believe I still have the original receipt. Um, it's still under warranty and I have the original box. 2200 bucks takes it. This machine is perfect. It's got uh, one terabyte, 64 gigs of RAM, and that's it. You can expand it up to 12 to 16 terabytes of storage easily yourself. I'll ship it in the original box, 2200 Venmo, you pay the ride. And I'm not done yet. I've got one more for sale. But let's not forget, I'm still giving away randomly a 2020 Razorblade Pro 17 4K touchscreen with 64 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD inside it. This, video, this laptop has a lot of history behind it if you follow me on the other channels. So like, share, subscribe, leave a comment saying that you're in and I'll pick someone randomly. I'll give it about a week or two before I pick a winner because it's a big one. Now, the other machine that I'm selling is a custom built desktop, a thread ripper that I had built last year by a company called Bison and they are no joke. These guys make serious machines. I had them build this for me in early 21. It was a $10,000 build. It has a 32 core AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970 third gen. It's overclocked stage two, water cooled, a liquid cooled CPU. It's got 128 gigabytes of memory, upgradable to 256. It's on Windows 10 Pro. It has a power, a two GPU ready power supply. And it has the NVIDIA Titan RTX 24 gigabyte card. You can put another one of those in there and bridge them together. This machine is no joke whatsoever at all. It was built to handle 4, 6, and 8K video editing. And it de definitely does it. I just don't use it. So I'm including a 27-inch uh, LG Ultrafine 4K monitor with it. And a set of Audio Engine brand new speakers with it. Now this thing, you can put as much storage in it as you want because it's a desktop. And if memory serves, I already put 10 terabytes of SSDs in it. So it's already pretty much hooked up. It's fast as ridic it's just ridiculously fast. I have the original build sheet, all the paperwork you would get. 
I'll ship it to you just like they shipped it to me. How's that? 5500 you pay the shipping, I take Venmo. So there is that. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. If you want to see me do any more comparisons on these two laptops, leave it in the comments. If you're interested in any of the laptops or the computer that's for sale, rjcjr10 at yahoo.com. I am out.